This is Twit. Well, what I do want to talk about is kind of continuing on from what we talked about last week. We got into driver assist systems last week, which is things like adaptive cruise control, lane keeping alerts, things like that. Yeah. And one of the things that Elon Musk said during the earnings call uh, earlier this week was, you know, he, he referred to the, the latest um, iteration of autopilot, which has this feature they call navigate on autopilot as being capable of full self-driving on highways. He said this and, for years. He said, oh, pretty soon you'll be able to just get in the car and it'll drive you across the country. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I just wanted to remind everybody hype. out That's there hype. that, that there, today there is not one single car that you can buy anywhere in the world that is fully self-driving. There, There is not a fully autonomous vehicle available for sale anywhere. And the only vehicles that come close to that are test vehicles that are being run by companies like Waymo and and uh, Ford and General Motors and 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 a bunch of other companies. There are areas are all, of the country like Phoenix where you can hail, or not hail, but you can arrange yeah, a they, ride with a Waymo and drive in it. There'll be a, te a safety driver in the front. Yeah, but even even those aren't. I mean, they're they're test vehicles, but they're not really. They're not. They're not. Uh, reliable enough to actually operate without a safety driver. Yet. Right. They're for licensed now, for, as test vehicles, too. They're not licensed as, yeah. you know, everyday cars. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, and I think, you know, last week we mentioned, you know, these SAE uh, levels of automation. And there's two in particular, the top two levels, levels four and five, that are considered what we call highly automated vehicles. And that's, that's kind of where you're getting into the realm of full self-driving. I would uh, like to never drive again. And I think, Mike, <laughs> honestly... Uh, my kids feel the same way. I remember I, I used to uh, talk pretty regularly to the CEO of uh, Ford when uh, he, he and he before uh, the current guy, um, Alan uh, Mulally, Alan Mulally. Well, who's yeah. a great guy, very talkative. And I always would ask him, when's Ford going to do it? And he said, Leo, Americans like to drive. Well, I think that's changing. I think there's a few of us it, it is. who don't want to well, drive. Especially in cities. I mean, yeah. you know, in, in cities, I think I don't think anybody really likes to drive in, in dense urban environments. No. And that's where you're going to see highly automated vehicles operating yeah. is in, in those kinds of environments where, you know, increasingly people are using things like Uber and Lyft and, and other ride yeah. hailing services yeah. or, or micro mobility. There, if, was, there was a micro mobility conference in San Francisco this week. Like scooters, uh, you mean? Yeah. Scooters, e-scooters and, and bikes and things like if that. If people like to drive, Uber wouldn't be as successful as it is. People like other well, people to actually, drive or maybe actually, even let the car drive. It, uh, you know, it's it's successful, um, but, you know, I don't think it's as, as successful as a lot of people think it is. It doesn't it make is. any money, but that's because well, it's so cheap. It does, well, it doesn't make money, but also less than 2% of all rides in the U.S. are ride hailing. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. that's small. So, I mean, yeah. You know, the, you know 98% of all the rides are still in other forms of transportation. Right. But, you know, to, to do fully automated driving, uh, like, you know, what everybody, you know, what the goal is for everybody, requires a lot more hardware and capability than is actually in any of the Teslas that are being built today that, that Elon claims will be someday fully capable of self-driving. In other because, words, when he says the car you're buying today someday will self-drive, that's not true. It can't. No, it's not. It doesn't because, have enough hardware to do it. Yeah, because you know, one, in order to do fully self-driving or highly automated driving, you you have to have a lot more redundancy than we have in any cars that are being built mm, today. Interesting. You know, I mean, the, the the traditional thing is, you know, if your power brakes your power brake booster fails, the human driver is the redundant system. You just press harder on the brake pedal. If right. You, if your power steering fails, you you can still t steer the car. You just turn harder on the steering wheel. Right. With an automated vehicle, you have a vehicle that is potentially capable of operating without. A human on board at all. So in fact, some of the have, some of the concept cars don't even have steering wheels. Google won't put steering wheels and pedals in theirs. They say uh, well, no, no. You need a living those, room on wheels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. but the the vehicles that they're operating today, the Chrysler Pacificas and soon the Jaguar I Paces that they're oh, those that are they're going to be operating. Yeah, yeah. Those are those still have human controls in. Them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know you you have to have you know a lot of redundant systems in order for these things to be able to operate. You know, without a human taking over. Autopilot still requires the human to be paying attention and ready to take over. And the same goes for every other system from every other car maker. To have a fully a fully self-driving vehicle, it's you know, if something fails, the car has to be capable of getting itself to a safe place without relying on a human to take over control. And we're not and that doesn't exist in, in the cars that are out there today. So let me ask you a question because if I I'm you know, pricing out a Model 3. I know you're not a big Tesla fan. I'm pricing out a Model 3. And one of the things, one of the options is for, and I think it's $5,000 for future 
Uh, if you ever want this to be, you know, it implies completely self-driving, you need to pay us now, so we'll put the equipment in. You're saying that that's a con or that I well, shouldn't no. pay that so, five grand? Yeah, so so the five grand is for the enhanced autopilot capability. Yes. And in fact, they put the, har the hardware that they put in, they put in every vehicle they build, the cameras, the radar. Uh, and the ultrasonic sensors. That's in a. They put it in every vehicle, whether you buy whether you buy the system or oh, not. Interesting. At the time of purchase, they charge you five thousand dollars if you want to turn on the software to control that. But they say and down then, the road at some point. Well, yeah, but that's that's for <laughs> they the, don't have it the yet. Self driving option. Yeah, that's another three thousand oh. dollars if you want that. So what so you're saying is I shouldn't probably that. pay that money up front. Well, in fact, you you can't anymore. A few oh. months ago, they they were they were. Charging five thousand for the yeah. enhanced autopilot and another three thousand yeah. for full self driving, but they yeah. actually stopped offering the full oh. self driving option a few months ago. So you can't even get that. Do anymore. they have a refund for the people who bought it? <laughs> they uh, no, they're still promising that they'll eventually get it, but you know we'll see what sounds happens like. With that. Sounds like you're skeptical. <laughs> yeah, well, just because I know what's in the cars, and they just don't have enough hardware in there to give you that that level of safety that is required right. for a vehicle that can operate without a human in the vehicle. Sam's trying to talk me out of buying a Model 3 when my lease <laughs> runs out on my Model X. I think you might win. Okay. If I could get a Porsche Taycan, I, I might buy that. When is That's coming out in the fall, right? That's an electric uh, vehicle from yeah, Porsche. Yeah, I think it goes on sale in Europe uh, like in late spring, early summer, and then it'll be here in the U.S. in the fall. That's not going to be self-driving either, though. No, but it, it'll, it'll, have some, it'll have capabilities similar to autopilot. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So how do I get on the list to order one of those in the fall? Um, I'll, I'll, uh, do you know anybody? I'll connect you, I'll connect you with somebody. And, and, Seriously, know, I, see I can, can see myself. You. I've never owned a Porsche, but that's a, but I like electric vehicles a lot. I really do. I love yeah, my and, Tesla you know, Model you know, X, to be honest. And, and there's a lot of great EVs coming to market, you know, in addition to. Hey, can we talk about that next week? What the, the future Absolutely. is? Cause that's, yeah. cause that's about to change dramatically. There's a handful yeah. of choices like the Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Volt, uh, but, but there's going to be a bunch more in the next year. Yeah, Sam both, both premium and affordable cars, too. He is a senior researcher at Navigant, uh, which means he covers this day in, day out, and he joins us each week to talk about the future of driving, which may mean you're in the back seat. See, I'm getting <laughs> old, Sam. I figure in the next... You may be lying in a bed in the back. Ten years, can I be lying in bed in my car? Mm, probably not. Oh, man. <laughs> That's about when I want it. Leo Lavoie, the tech guy. More calls right after this. <laughs> oh, you're depressing. Eventually, maybe someday. <laughs>